Trisomy 21, Down Syndrome. In this video, we will learn about Trisomy 21, which is commonly known as Down Syndrome. It is a genetic condition caused by an extra copy of chromosome 21. This additional genetic material disrupts normal growth and development, leading to distinct physical traits, intellectual disability, and certain medical challenges. Now let's talk about how this condition happens. The most common cause seen in 95% of cases is complete trisomy, where every cell in the body has an extra chromosome 21. This happens due to an error during the formation of eggs or sperm called non-disjunction. In about 4% of cases, a Robertsonian translocation is responsible. This means part of chromosome 21 attaches to another chromosome, like chromosome 14. This form can be inherited, so parents might need genetic counseling. Lastly, we have mosaicism, which accounts for about 1% of cases. Here, some cells have an extra chromosome 21, while others are normal. Mosaicism can lead to milder features depending on the proportion of affected cells. Advanced maternal age is one of the biggest risk factors. Women over 35 have a significantly higher chance of having a child with Down syndrome due to age-related changes in egg cells. For instance, at age 40, the risk is about 1 in 100 compared to 1 in 700 for women under 30. That's why age is an important consideration during pregnancy. Down syndrome is the most common chromosomal disorder in live births and also the most common cause of malformation syndromes. Let's explore the features of this condition. Children with Down syndrome often have intellectual disability, which can range from mild to moderate. They also have distinct facial characteristics like brushfield spots, which are small white spots on the iris, epicanthal folds, a flat nasal bridge, and a protruding tongue. These facial features make the condition easily recognizable. In the hands, you may notice a single crease running across the palm, called a transverse palmar crease, and a wide gap between the first and second toes, known as a sandal gap. Many children with Down syndrome are born with congenital heart defects, the most common being a complete atrioventricular septal defect, or AVSD. This is a complex defect where there are holes between the heart's chambers, leading to abnormal blood flow. Auscultation in these cases might reveal a systolic ejection murmur at the left upper sternal border due to increased blood flow through the pulmonary valve, along with a loud second heart sound caused by pulmonary hypertension. Additionally, a hollow systolic murmur can be heard at the lower left sternal border due to a ventricular septal defect. Now let's move to the gastrointestinal system. Around 5% of patients have conditions like duodenal atresia, where the first part of the small intestine is blocked, often associated with an annular pancreas. These infants may present with bilious vomiting shortly after birth. Other conditions include imperforate anus, esophageal atresia with a tracheoesophageal fistula, and Hirschsprung disease, which causes severe constipation due to missing nerve cells in parts of the intestine. Neurologically, children with Down syndrome are at risk of developing early onset dementia by the age of 40. This is because the gene for amyloid precursor protein linked to Alzheimer's disease is located on chromosome 21. Overexpression of this gene leads to the buildup of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles in the brain, similar to what is seen in Alzheimer's patients. Patients with Down syndrome also have an increased risk of certain medical conditions. These include leukemia, specifically acute myeloid leukemia, AML, associated with the T8-21 translocation 
and acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, with the T1221 translocation. They are also prone to hypothyroidism, which can present as lethargy or developmental delays. That's why annual thyroid screenings are recommended. Other complications include atlantoaxial instability, which can lead to cervical cord compression and increased susceptibility to infections due to immune dysfunction. Diagnosing Down syndrome often begins prenatally. Between 12 and 14 weeks, an ultrasound can detect increased neutral translucency, which appears as a thickened hypoechoic area at the back of the fetal neck. Amniocentesis, or chorionic villus sampling, can confirm the diagnosis through karyotyping or fish testing. A quad screen blood test performed between 16 and 20 weeks can also help identify pregnancies at risk. Finally, let's discuss management. Treatment is mainly supportive. Early intervention programs, including speech therapy, physical therapy, and occupational therapy, play a key role in maximizing social and intellectual development. For structural defects, like heart or gastrointestinal anomalies, surgery is often required. Life skills training is essential for helping these individuals achieve as much independence as possible. With proper care and support, individuals with Down syndrome can lead fulfilling lives.